Hey Stampers, Gator again. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm coming back with a card called, it's called a Twist and Pop and it's not the one we did the other night like that. It's uh, this one. This is the, ah, how sweet is that? And it just folds back in on itself. It's brilliant. Love it. It's even got a beautiful pattern on the back. You could decorate the back. You could put a pattern on the back to write. Um, this is the 8x8 eight eight one, believe it or not. I've also done a 10x10. Ten ten. Love it. And I've also done a 12x12 twelve twelve one. Which is uh, a bit ridiculous. <laughs> but it's absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. And it just folds back in on itself. Absolutely brilliant. So I will put the measurements on the blog and where you have to score for the 12x12. 12 12, also for the 10x10. 10 10. But I'm going to show you how to make the 8x8 8 8 one now. This is using Stampin' Up! products. These were just using my normal papers just for practice. So I'll show you how I made it. So simple. You're going to need a piece of designer series paper. You can do this with cardstock as well. I do find it's a little bit harder to see the, oh, what they're called, the crease lines. But uh, whatever you want to show on the outside and on the inside, face down. And you're going to grab your scoreboard. Let me make sure you're in. Let me see if I can zoom in as well. Right. Oh, might be a little bit out a bit. Right, you're going to need a ruler. At the two inch mark. You're going to, at four inches, you're going to score down to two inches. And then at six inches, you're going to score down to four inches. I just make sure that. And I, once I know it's, I'm on, I know I'm on a straight line when this is pushed right up against here. So at four, you'd score down to two. And at six, you score down to four. And when you repeat now, I can see where the four is there. And I'm going to score down to two, which is that line that's just run there. Oops, there. And then the six, you're going to score down to four. And you're going to do that on all four sides. So I just line up at four on the... The first one you're going to line it up at two, score down to two. And on the others you're just going to get your score down to four. Because your two is there. You can see where you've scored two. And the six down to four. Now on this last one, your lines are already there. But I'm going to put this back in at four. Just making sure I'm not any higher than that I need to be. Score from four down to two and six down to four. And you can see those. Can you see them? What I'll do now, I'm just going to move the, the plates because you don't need the plate anymore. I'll zoom back out. And I'm just going to fold on the that score line all the way up to the two and then what we're going to do then I'm, uh, I'm folding the other way so the two inch mat lines are valleys and the long ones are mountains so I'm just going to crease them in so just up to that line and then that one I'm going to crease down and we're going to do some more score lines in a minute so as long as I get those little score lines creased and then fold the big ones it looks harder than it is but it's so simple and so quick so this is going to be one of those 10 minute treats perfect now you've got these score lines. You've got marks there and there. You're going to connect these lines up now. And when you do it on the 10 by 10 and the 12 by 12, they all meet up. 
um, so you will just basically take your score tool put it on that corner and you're going to score it down to that corner and you're making like a square in the centre so that is why I crease them so I can see I'm going to that corner there it's easier when you've got it in front of you, you can, you'll can you see what I mean. And once you've done that, you can just, you can just fold them outwards. And that's all you're going to do. Because that's the way they need to go. They need to go as a valley as well. Yeah, I scored that one. Just make sure I've got it on the right. There we go. And I'm just doing it with my finger. So we've done that one, that one, we're going to connect those two, we're going to connect those two and then we're going to fold it all up, which looks a lot harder than it is, but it's not, trust me. Just make sure I've got that down to my score line. Oh, no, I'm off the corner a bit, so I'm going to start there. And now I can... Fold that over and use my finger. One more to go because we're going to make a square here. I can see it now, there to there. And then I can fold that over. I'm just using my finger. You can use your bone fold if you want to. You will get a nicer crease. You will end up burnishing these anyway once it's all folded into place as well. But how simple. And look at that beautiful pattern on the inside. Your polka dots will be your back of your card. So now just fold each one up on itself. It's, it looks harder than it is, but it's not. You're just pushing twist and twist and it just all falls into place just like that and now you can give it a good burnish turn it over and you can reinforce your back score lines as well go around and burnish all these score lines and that's it and then now because I've got a direction I can see where to put. It just takes a couple of goes and it will just all go back into place. Absolutely fabulous. Just keep burnishing. The more you burnish and the more times you open and close it, the better it is. So there, and then it just flops back into place. I find if you tuck, put your four fingers next to each other and just press and it just plops back down. Now this square is roughly two and three quarters by two and three quarters. So I've cut a piece of card which is oops, two and a half by two and a half. And that kind of go in the centre giving you a little border all the way round. Um, what did I use on my other one? Where is there? Oh, staring me in the face. Look, I wasn't quite wide enough with my piece of paper on that one, but this is just practice. But I stamped, it's a million little things. Our friendship isn't one big thing, it's a million little things. So I'm going to find a line, a wider piece. That, yes, that's perfect. Um, what colour am I going to use? Um, oh, let's do it in black, let's do it in black, just for to make it stand out, because it's black and white on the other side. So, let's see if I can get this stamp on here. Beautiful, perfect. Then I can just trim that down a size.
perfect. I can stamp our other sentiment. Beautiful, and I've got this gorgeous little butterfly this time. Just having it at an angle, and believe it or not, I'm just going to use a little piece of scrap paper and I'm going to stamp off and stamp like that, and that's going in the centre. So I paid a fortune for these pins, stainless steel, not supposed to rust, and they rust in. So I do apologise. I sent some to the lovely Ian. Ian, I'm sorry, my darling, if they rust up on you. I do apologise. They told me they were stainless steel and they didn't rust. So I was just sent for some more. So I'm going to stick that, because my paper's directional, in the centre. And that's why I did it on a little diamond angle. I'm going to close this back up. Perfect. And then what I'm going to do, I had space with the other ones to do the daisy. There it is. Just going to grab some dimensionals. off. I'm going to pop that up in there in the corner and like I was saying you could add another piece of whisper white on the back or you could even just write on the back with that one it's uh, it's quite plain. Grab some rhinestones I'm just going to pop one right there and I've got my little tub here with my beautiful butterflies in. I'm going to use a one large. Oh, stab myself. <laughs> and he's going to go on there. I'm going to pop a rhinestone right on there with him. Beautiful. And then I'm going to grab another one of the little ones. You can go right there on top of that one. And you could make your own little designer um, envelopes to go with these. Out of the same paper. And what else should we have? There we go, we've got one more. Let's have three. And the little rhinestone. Because they've used four, I'm going to pop one of them up there as well to keep the numbers e -e odd. So there we are. There is our ten minute little treat of a flip and twist and flip card. Or twist and pop, whatever you want to call it. I just thought I had to show you, it's just the cutest little thing ever. And so, um, somebody left a comment when we were in chat the other night. Um, they'd said, oh, Sam Clayton's got a beautiful, fun, fold, diamond something card. I've already done one, babe. But two, in fact, two years, January the 27th, 2017. So I could revive it, take off the flap, I suppose, like Sam did. But... Uh, She's done a, a marvellous job with hers, so go on over and have a look at Sam's. But I have done one January, I think either the 17th or the 27th, 2017, and uh, it's called the Diamond Fold Card. That's what it's called. So there's the 8x8 with this one as well. I used thinner paper with that one. 
these are substantial these are brilliant these are really strong uh, papers that's the eight uh, ten by ten and this is the beautiful gorgeous 12 by 12 isn't that absolutely beautiful there we go there is my 10 minute treat for you today I hope you like it please give it a go it's brilliant uh, I'd love a thumbs up and a share and I added like the daisies to these but the daisy's too big to go on the corner there so that's why I didn't add the daisies on the other two thought I'd give it a bit of glam with some uh, some butterflies instead so don't forget to press the subscribe button if it's up there or there one of the corners it's in and I'll see you next time thanks for watching bye